Mixed bag to the start of Great Green season. We've got Chenny with us this weekend. Those two boys go back a very long time. We sat them down together, let the carnage unfold. And as a real bonus, we've got your social questions at the end. I thought I was done with this sort of carry on. Ah, <laughs> that hurt your hand. Yeah. yeah. Craig, here we are. I, did, I haven't spotted you for a while. I know. I thought we were done with this sort of carry on. I thought it was done with you. Full stop. There you I'm go. Like you a, came back. I'm like a bad smell. <laughs> I'm like a bad smell, brother. Here we are, Croatia. Before we talk about this weekend, let's talk more generally about the move. And um, you and I get on well. We know each other pretty well. And where's this, where this going? <laughs> just um, all I'm going to say is I think you are more naturally at home in a, a M Sport. That's how I'm going to start this. Do you think that's fair to say? The way, you know, the way that M Sports run, the whole family vibe about it, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think it's yeah, fair enough to say. Um, I think more than anything, it's sort of where everything started back at the start of my career. Um, first of all, with my dad. Uh, obviously, my dad was always, uh, or for the most part of his, his career, he was using Ford and M Sport products. Uh, and then, obviously, when I started in the junior series in rallying, it was always in Fiestas, then obviously in the academy, JWRC. Uh, you know, it, it was always sort of heading in that direction. It was only after we'd won the, the SWRC that I went on to, to do some work with Porsche and latterly Citroen and sort of went away from M Sport. But I, I always felt somewhere deep down that at some point along the career, at some point along the path, that I'd, uh, I'd come back again. Scott Greensmith, it's just you just stop. I, I got the good news and I got the bad news. <laughs> I got good news and bad news, boy! So yeah, no, I did. I did think at some point it was going to happen. Uh, honestly speaking, I didn't know when along my career it was going to happen. But uh, you know, ultimately, the, the, the opportunity presented itself at the end of last year. Uh, and actually, you know, now I think that we've both met each other at the you know at the, at the best time, and I feel I can really, I can really give it my all. That's the key bit. It's the timing of it. You know, and M Sport have got a history of getting when there's big when there's a massive regulation change. They've got a history of getting it right, in particular year one. It seems it seems like a sorted piece of kit. No, it absolutely is. And, you know, I think it was uh, it was very clear to see in Monty that we had a we had a very quick package. Uh, obviously, Seb showed that uh, incredible effect. You know what he did there. But honestly, the the, the hard work and effort that goes in behind the scenes, uh, and more especially in the last two years, uh, but you know by, by the team and by all the boys and girls involved in it, has been that's what really attracted me at the start. Um, and you know, I, I, it was such a pleasure to see you know the everything being paid off in uh, in, in Monty and. You know the the fact that the car was able to hit the ground running like it has done, and, uh, like the other previous generations of uh, of cars have done as well. When there's been a regulation change, so it's great. It's a great place to be. I, I'm uh, me and Paul are really enjoying our time here, and yeah, it's just a, a good vibes like the kids say nowadays. Yeah. Is it is it difficult to because obviously you've done time with Citroen, and then you went to Hayen, and you've done time with them. It makes you sound like you're <laughs> in prison. I didn't mean it like that. Uh, but you, you spent some time at Citroen and then you were at Hyundai. Is it difficult to kind of jump? How long does it take to, to, to move to a new team and get completely settled in and trust the people around you? Yeah, I guess it was compared to, with Hyundai, it was difficult because obviously I wasn't doing full season. I was very much the, the, the fourth driver or, or the third driver, whatever you want, to, you want to put it. And obviously, you know, the car wasn't really set up around me. It was just, you know, the, 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 the two guys were leading the team. And, you just kind of had to pull up with a lot, a lot of things, whereas I really feel at home, you know, here at M Sport and Ford, and I feel like it's it's our car, you know. Uh, okay, everyone's input is, is taken, but you know, if there's if the direction on the setup that I would prefer to do, then you know, at least this time I've got full reins to go to go and do it. So uh, that actually took a little bit of time to get my head around because I haven't been used to it. Even with Citroen over the years, you know, I, I was never able to have that much direction inside the team. So it feels it feels really good, I have to say here, and, and to be able to, able to have that. Not that power, but to be able to have Influence. that freedom. Yeah, exactly. Influence. Yeah. yeah. Do, but with that comes a bit of pressure, fella. Do you do you feel that? And is you know, have you had those difficult discussions with Malcolm yet? And they're coming if you haven't. Yeah. Really. <laughs> but like, have you? You know, do you feel that pressure? Because yeah, you're yeah. leading the team, mate. Yeah, ultimately, yeah. So for sure, I, I, at times I do feel pressure. Uh, I think it, I'd be lying if I said I didn't, I didn't feel any pressure. For sure, there is. It's the first time I've ever, I've ever had to lead, lead a team. I've always sort of been in the shadows of everybody else. So. Um, but honestly, I, I don't think I can I can get any more pressure than what I felt at Monty this year. Um, and it wasn't so much about leading the team. It wasn't so much about the expectations of the others. It's just that you work all your life to get to a goal, and you, you, you sacrifice everything to try to 
to try to get yourself one of these, you know, uh, one of these drives, and finally it's there, it's in front of you, and it's like, oh my God, it's happening now. And now you have to not only perform, but you have to enjoy it. You have to make the most of it. It's something that I want. It's something that I've wanted all my life. So if I don't enjoy it now, or if I don't make the most of it now, you know, there's not going to be, you know, 20 years of this. You know, it's going to be, you know, uh, uh, okay. I'm hoping a few, a good few seasons, but you know, it's not going to be infinite. So it's just about trying to live in that moment and enjoy it and, and try not to let it flash by. Monty was an unbelievable start to the year. What was that like for you when you know, you're up on the podium and in, in a new car and everything, like you said, at that moment, you're going, everything's coming together. It's all for this. That must have been a hell of a feeling. Uh, it was incredible, I have to say. Uh, and obviously the week or, or the rally uh, period, let's say, started bad because obviously I had an accident in the test. So. I was a bag of nerves starting it, uh, but obviously the way that the weekend unfolded, just you know, the first of all, the pace of the car, uh, the pace of us all, we, you know, we all showed some really good good speed. That was that was great, um, and then you know, uh, culminating at the end of the rally, getting the podium, you know, stood in the podium with uh, with Sebastian Loeb and Sebastian Ogier, you know, in, in Monte Carlo. I, I don't think you can ask a whole lot more. To be honest with you, it was a it was a fairy tale moment really, and a fairy tale start to the season. And, and a just reward, like I said, for everyone that's that's worked their butts off for the last two years, you know, through COVID uh, and, and and all the difficulties that went with it, and to have a car, you know, winning car at the end of that, that was something uh, everybody was so proud about, and I was just so pleased for for everybody. It was a hell of a weekend. Started a massive high. <coughs> Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> Sweden. Yeah. What do you say? Ah, just just a disaster from from the start, really. Um, I, I, I perhaps went with the wrong approach. Uh, in some ways, I I thought that running so far up the road on Friday was going to be a real big disadvantage, and I felt like I needed to stick my neck out to try and you know keep myself in the hunt for a good road position for Saturday. I don't think I needed to do quite as much. Uh, you know, I didn't need to reinvent the wheel. You know, at the end of the day, Cali won the rally for first in the road on Friday, so. Uh, you know, a little bit of uh, ignorance or a little bit of maybe an experience on my side. I, I thought that something bigger, a bigger performance was needed and maybe more risks were needed on Friday to be sure I had a good road position for Saturday, but you know, it, it didn't need to be what I was doing. And uh, Ultimately, we were very unlucky, uh, you know, with the second off that we had, uh, you know, I just got caught out with the with the windscreen washers, it, was, it started to freeze onto the screen and okay, we'd already lost time earlier in the stage, but I think it was a little bit unlucky what happened in the end, but still, uh, yeah, not, not the best way to, to start everything. Which brings us to this weekend, Croatia. And do you know what? If you look at the results from last year, eighth, but there was so much going against you last year that you can write it off. I mean, you'd had next to no time on tarmac in the Hyundai. As you said, you were just arriving and getting in a car that you didn't know. You know, it was always going to be a difficult rally. And this, this rally is so specific as well, particularly the roads. You're coming into this weekend, it's a hell of an opportunity that you've got. N knowing that the, the Puma works well, you're quick on tarmac, always have been. So what's, what's the plan? Yeah, look at. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the rally. Even though tomorrow is going to be obviously fr Friday is going to be very tricky. Uh, you know the conditions are, are not looking so favourable, uh, or not, not looking so nice, let's say. But um, I, I feel much more comfortable this year. You know, heading into the rally than than, uh, than last year. You know, I, I was, for example, last year here I, I, I started the, the the test for everybody, so I was the first person to drive the car. I spent the whole day trying to chase a setup, and by you know five o'clock in the evening, I had a, I had a reasonably good setup. That the guys started the next day and, and went on with, whereas I felt I missed out on just you know driving and getting used to the car and, and, and whatnot. So it was, yeah, the rally started badly. I didn't feel 100% confident. And in these roads, if you don't feel confident, you just get left don't behind. Yeah. You just get left behind. So yeah. uh, I feel much better this year. You know, already in the shakedown this morning, I just felt confident on the first run. You know, it all felt under control and you know didn't didn't have to take any big risks. So I feel, yeah, I do feel good with this one. Yeah. Top five, podium. What's the what's the plan? Uh, ultimately, we need to be fighting for podiums. You know, if we want to be, you know, trying to get some good points together for the drivers' championship and the manufacturers' championship, then we need to start. We need to start looking uh, at more podiums. You know, we done it in Monte. There should be absolutely no reason why we uh, why we can't do it on other events. Um, okay, there'll be, like I said, or like I've been thinking, there'll be other rallies in the season that I haven't done now for a couple of years, like Portugal, Sardinia. Uh, you know, rallies like that, Spain also I haven't done since 2017, 18. So. This rally now I've experienced from last year, so it's one of the ones where we need to try and you know bring home some good good points, and of course we have to look at the podium. Well, look, best of luck this weekend. It's going to be a tough weekend. I think it's fair to say it's going to be the driver that doesn't make the mistakes because that's what.
Croatia does. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely going to be uh, it's going to be one of those weekends. So let's see how it unfolds. We've got some questions from the fans that I want to fire into you. Um, <laughs> Here we go. You did a lot of flicking there. What are you flicking yeah. through? What no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Does does pineapple belong on a pizza? No. And it's, an Italian dies every time someone puts a pineapple on a pizza. This is a good one from Alistair Cummings. How many cups of tea is too many? No, None. Infinite. Yeah. Yeah, infinite. I've had, I can't, I can't count how many I've had already today. Uh, what music do you like? Joe Dolan. Yeah. Irish. Irish music. Irish, Irish music. Trad music. Joe Dolan. <laughs> How are they going to know? Joe Dolan, lads. Do you not know Joe Dolan? I know Joe Dolan, but do we think the Dirtfish fans would know who Joe Dolan is? There you go. Do you know? Well, he's like. No, he's, he's, he doesn't know who Joe Dolan is. He's he, saying he knows. He sold, I know he's trying he sold, to change the subject. He sold sausages. <laughs> Tell me who Joe Dolan is. Tell me who Joe Dolan he is. He sold sausages in the Dunbelievables. Didn't know I knew that, did you? Joe Dolan? Yeah. When, the man, when your man walks in and he goes, and he goes, uh, like. He's not the gas man, but I promise you, Joe Dolan's there flogging sausages to the boys. Is he? Yeah. I didn't even, which one? In the Irish Miami? music. Uh, in no, the modern? The telly. The telly? Yeah, that comes in. One. There you go. So it's not a lie. It's definitely not a lie. Name me one of his songs. I couldn't name one of his songs. I didn't say I like Joe Dolan. You said you like Joe Dolan. This isn't about me. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Such a good oh, looking you, woman. My, you make me smile. Uh, right, one from Ben. Good question, this. You got one car. One stage, what's it going to be? Well, let's go Mark II around the ballroom test track. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'd like to... Mm, uh, the Escort WRC that I've got, I'd like to go to Belgium. The yeah. stage in Ypres? Yeah. Particular stage? Kevinburg. Okay. Up, up the cobbles. Loads of bangs up through the forest. Who are your best friends in the WRC? Should we have a cuddle? Yeah. Come here, give me a cuddle. Oh, I just slipped the hand. <laughs> <laughs> So my best friends, uh, it wouldn't be you. That would be you. You know what I mean? Uh, my best friends. Uh, uh, you didn't ask. No, who, did, who are your best friends? Let me answer. I'm just going to just give you a hug. I didn't say you were my best friend. Oh, right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, That's embarrassing. Paul. Yeah. You've got to say that. Otherwise, he'll just... Adrian. Yeah. Gus. Yeah. And all the respective four drivers and teams. We're all friends here. You're a good, po good politician. That <laughs> would be good, wouldn't they? Good politician. Good one here from Diesel Dave. Uh, Love the name Diesel Dave. <laughs> Honda, Honda Civic or Peugeot 106 or that Cold David Bob. lobbed in earlier, uh, a Toyota Corolla Twin Cam. Oh, Twin Cam. Yeah. Oh, screamers. Yeah, yeah. Red or brown sauce on a bacon butty? Neither. No. Right. Barbecue sauce. Technically, that's well, it's not brown sauce, is it? No. No. What would you do? For money, if he wasn't a rally driver, I know the answer to that question. I'd have money because I wouldn't be rallying. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, You're not going to get much for this, are you? No, not to be fair. Not. <laughs> what would I do for money if I wasn't a rally driver? Not much. I, I would probably be working for my dad, and I would have probably have driven the thing into the ground at this point. So yeah. we wouldn't. I was only there for a couple of months. And I had a good go. I had a good go at it then. <laughs> That's it. There you go. Your, que I... your questions have been answered. Blame. How have you been getting away with it for so long? I don't know. How are you winging it like after, after, all, I'll, I'll, after all these years? I'll answer it on my deathbed. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> By the way. By the way. I blackmail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to keep sending money to this account every month. <laughs> Listen, brother, have a great weekend. Enjoy Croatia. It's nice to see you. You look good in yeah. purple and blue. With a, bit, with a bit of red on you. With a bit of red. Suits you. A bit of sauce, a bit of sauce on me as well if you look close enough. I just had my lunch. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much.